is Dr. Victoria Addis, who is uh, also a member of a esteemed member of our glaucoma service and also the associate program director, uh, talking about challenging patients. And one of the most challenging set of patients are normal tension or patients with normal tension glaucoma. And she's going to be talking about optimizing risk factors in normal tension glaucoma patients. Thank you so much, Prithvi, and thank you to the program organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak today. As we all know, glaucoma is the second leading cause of vision loss worldwide, while approximately one third of patients with primary open angle glaucoma are ultimately reclassified as normal tension glaucoma, the percentage does differ depending on the region, with 32% of POAG patients in the US with normal tension disease, and this number actually increases to 92% in Japan. The vascular hypothesis of glaucomatous optic neuropathy is well established in normal tension disease. Diminished perfusion of the optic nerve by the peripapillary microcirculation leads to retinal uh, ganglion cell stress and ultimately cell death and atrophy. However, many risk factors are controversial with respect to their effect on glaucomatous damage, while others have not been thoroughly studied. In this retrospective case control study of patients seen at the Mayo Clinic between 2005 and 2015, multiple vascular associated conditions were found with a higher frequency in NTG patients as compared to controls, as can be seen in this figure. Though diabetes, dyslipidemia, and coronary artery disease were found to be positively associated with normal tension disease in this study, other studies have not found the same associations. The authors of this study further classified patients with NTG into two separate groups. Phenotype 1 was defined as patients with risk factors that comprise or are associated with metabolic syndrome, while phenotype 2 was defined as patients with Raynaud syndrome, migraine headaches, anemia, or systemic hypotension. Phenotype 2 patients were more likely to be female, younger, have a lower BMI, and a lower IOP in this study. The association of phenotype 2 patients with disturbed autoregulation and higher risk of normal tension glaucoma has been previously described, and much of my presentation today will concentrate on risk factors in this subset of patients. The diagnostic evaluation of NTG should always begin with a thorough medical history and review of systems. It is not uncommon for patients with NTG to communicate a history of cold extremities, migraine headaches, systemic hypotension, or other signs of vascular dysregulation. A complete history may also be helpful in alerting the clinician to the possibility of non-glaucomatous causes of optic neuropathy, such as ocular trauma or other CNS pathology. I will be concentrating today on the systemic conditions shown on this slide that have been shown to have an association with normal tension glaucoma in multiple studies. Other conditions, um, including those that are generally more universally to, accepted to be associated with NTG and those with conflicting results will not be presented today due to time constraints. Many studies have demonstrated a correlation between both arterial hypertension as well as arterial hypotension and glaucoma. Most experts believe, however, that the treatment of hypertension is the culprit in resulting NTG and optic nerve ischemic damage. The definition of high blood pressure has changed over time, and patients are now often treated more aggressively. Exaggerated nocturnal hypotension or dips in blood pressure at night, which may compromise susceptible capillary beds, has been implicated in optic nerve head ischemia and glaucoma progression in the setting of well-controlled IOP. Systemic medications used to treat conditions that affect tissue perfusion have also led to confusions in the literature. Multiple studies have shown that calcium channel blocker use may have a protective effect in normal tension disease with slowing visual field progression, potentially by reducing vascular resistance and reducing the effect of endothelin-1 in ocular circulation. Conversely, systemic beta blockers have been associated with a higher frequency of disc hemorrhage as well as progression in normal tension patients. Does timing of medication matter? In one study looking at morning versus evening dosing of Valsartan, equivalent 24-hour blood pressure efficacy was found regardless of dosing time. More recently, the time or treatment in morning versus evening study, a prospective randomized trial recently performed in the United Kingdom, looked at the association of morning versus evening dosing of antihypertensive medication on cardiovascular events and found no difference. The authors of the study concluded that patients can be advised that they may take their regular antihypertensive medication at a convenient time that minimizes any undesirable effects. To summarize, consider 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring to look for a nocturnal dip 
in blood pressure in NTG patients with continued optic nerve damage despite low IOP. Involve the patient's PCP or cardiologist to fine tune blood pressure control if necessary and consider calcium channel blockers in this population as well. Vasospasm has also been found to be associated with normal tension glaucoma. Blood perfusion to the optic disc is affected by the integrity of the autoregulatory system, and in the presence of vasospasm, this is impaired. Endothelin-1 is a potent vasoconstrictor peptide produced by vascular endothelial cells. Compared with healthy controls, higher plasma ET1 levels have been observed in glaucoma patients, particularly those with normal tension glaucoma. Primary vascular dysregulation syndrome, or Flammer syndrome, describes a complex of clinical features caused mainly by dysregulation of the blood supply. The range of symptoms uh, in this feature is wide, as shown to the image to the right, and not all patients will ultimately develop disease. A comprehensive questionnaire has been developed to better screen patients for this syndrome. Flammer syndrome is believed to increase the risk for certain eye conditions, including normal tension glaucoma, particularly in younger patients. Treatment of this syndrome consists of lifestyle modifications, nutritional recommendations such as increasing consumption of antioxidants, and taking magnesium supplements to inhibit the effect of endothelin-1, as well as medical therapies. Silent cerebral infarcts are defined as brain infarcts that result from vascular occlusion that are found incidentally by MRI or CT in the absence of clinically detectable focal neurologic signs. This is a relatively common finding seen in one of four patients over the age of 80 and is a risk factor for further stroke. Many studies have found evidence of frequent vascular insults in patients with NTG, and it has been suggested that prevention of silent cerebral infarcts may ultimately slow visual field progression in these patients. The American Heart Association now recommends following stroke prevention guidelines in this subset of patients, including optimizing a patient's underlying medical conditions, encouraging a Mediterranean diet low in salt, and avoiding smoking. Recent research suggests an association between normal tension glaucoma and dementia, though the evidence is missed with POAG. The association between NTG and both OPTN and TBK1, two genes implicated in frontotemporal dementia, suggests the possibility of shared neurodegenerative pathways in these two diseases. More research in this area is necessary. Finally, when is neuroimaging indicated in patients with NTG? Though studies have shown that routine neuroimaging for normal tension glaucoma has a low sensitivity for detecting mass lesions, there are certain factors that should prompt consideration for neuroimaging. Young patients with visual acuity less than 2040, those with vertically aligned field defects, optic nerve pallor in excess of cupping, unilateral disease, and those with rapidly progressive disease despite well-controlled IOP should be considered for neuroimaging to rule out CNS pathology. To conclude, all patients should be considered uh, to be encouraged to maintain a heart healthy diet and lifestyle. Exercise, weight loss if overweight, and smoking cessation should be stressed, as should a diet rich in antioxidants. Collaborate with a patient's PCP or cardiologist if necessary, and always remember to take a thorough review of systems as many patients with normal tension disease suffer from a host of other conditions. Finally, if the diagnosis of NTG is unclear, consider neuroimaging and referral to a neuro-ophthalmologist. Thank you very much for your attention.